If you want to make sure that your tracks are always going to work on stage, you need a redundant system. But is a redundant system worth it? Is it worth the cost of implementing it to your setup? And is it right for you? Well, on today's episode of Behind the Space Bar, I'm going to share some very simple questions you can ask yourself and answer to decide if it's right and worth it for you. Hey everyone, welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. If this is your first time, I'm so glad you're here. This is a podcast that I release every single Monday and it's for folks like you that are performing on stage with Ableton Live. Today, we're, we're talking shop, we're going deep. You know, sometimes these are philosophical, sometimes they're fun, uh, I mean, they're always fun. Sometimes they were kind of fun like they were a couple weeks ago when we shared uh, on stage fails and flops. But today's, we are getting to something that's very, very hyper specific to using on stage. And that's a whole idea of a redundant system. Uh, let me show you an example. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, uh, I'm just gonna show this picture of the iConnectivity Play Audio 12. This is my go-to interface when it comes to creating a redundant playback rig is very, very simple, right? Two computers, we connect to our Play Audio 12. Uh, it's a simple thing to integrate into our setup. But it's possible that you see this and you look at the price and you're wanting to implement and it's incredibly, incredibly affordable, but you're going, man, is it worth, I've got an audio interface, is it worth getting another computer, getting this new audio interface, learning it, integrating it into my setup? Um, well, maybe, maybe not. We're going to talk about that on today's episode. Maybe you watch uh, this rig rundown that I, I did. You watch this, this video, you see all the gear that's in this particular rig rundown and you go, there's no hope. Like I just, how am I ever going to figure this out and make this happen? I, I understand the feeling and I understand your concern. And so it's easy to ask the question, is a redundant rig worth it? So what I want to do in this episode really quickly is give you a couple questions to ask, kind of real simple criteria to go. Uh, this helps you decide if it's worth it or not. And then I wanna end with uh, um, two real simple approaches to implementing redundancy to your setup no matter what you're doing. So here's, here's kind of, let's dive into today's content. Number one, what's the cost of it going down? So um, here's kind of the questions to think. If your track rig stops working, if you've got Ableton on stage, you're running tracks, uh, if it were to go down and stop working, is it okay? What I mean by that is if you're in the middle of the show, something happens with your computer, there's a hiccup, Ableton has a crash and it's just continually looping, it's an infinite crashing kind of loop uh, and you're not able to get it uh, working and open, is that okay? Can you go on? Can you keep uh, you know, finishing the rest of the show? Do you have uh, some sort of backup plan to make it through? Um, if you can go on the show without it, then it's potentially... Uh, okay not having a redundant rig. Uh, if your keys rig stops functioning, uh, you know, you're using Ableton for keys, maybe you're using main stage for keys. Let's say main stage were to crash, which would not be a, a long shot, but let's say main stage were to crash um, and your keys rig went down, is that okay? Like, do you have a hardware keyboard you can pivot to? Do you have some sort of other setup that you could potentially use? Well, if so, then maybe not having redundancy is okay. Um, if your vocal processing rig fails and goes down um, and suddenly what you are using, you're using your UA interface to process vocals, kind of like Willie's doing here in this video, like I teach on the site with two different courses, we'll link in the show notes showing you how to do that. Can the show still go on? So that question is, what's the cost of things going down? Can you still operate? Can the show still go on? Uh, if so, then I would still highly encourage you in every scenario to go the path of redundant rig. Uh, again, we'll talk about how to do that, kind of what I call this, the three S's of redundancy. We'll talk about implementing that in a moment. Um, uh, the, the sh if the show could still go on and that's okay, and maybe you don't have the budget for redundancy right now, then you're probably okay. But I would still encourage you ultimately to go down towards that path. If you're not okay with that, let's say you're working with an artist where uh, there's like three people on stage and the rest of it is tracks and there's vocal processing happening. And if that were to go down, then um, things would be bad. Then you need a redundant system. And I want to reframe what your thought of a redundant system and when you think of a redundant system, I want to reframe what that is. So again, just for folks watching on YouTube, bringing up this screenshot again uh, of, of Willie talking through uh, his setup with Post Malone and how they're using Ableton Live and doing vocal processing and tuning. Uh, if you look at that and you go, man, that's just too much gear. Like I, I can't make that happen. Again, I go back to what I mentioned earlier in the episode, the Play Audio 12, which is an interface that does audio and MIDI redundancy in one, 
You still have to have two computers, so there's an extra cost there, but that's an audio interface that costs um, less than most really good playback interfaces that you would just buy, uh, you know, a single interface. You get two interfaces in one with the Play Audio 12. So it doesn't cost as much as it is, but even still, maybe you even look at the Play Audio 12 and you go, man, I, I wish I could implement that, but um, it just feels too complex. I don't have the money right now. Here's my encouragement to you. A redundant setup is just simply making a plan and answering the what if, right? You're just simply making a plan for the what ifs. What if my computer goes down? Here's my plan. What if my vocal processing rate goes down? Here's my plan. Your redundant kind of setup may just simply be, if our computer were to go down, then we're going to do an acoustic set. So I'm gonna bring my acoustic guitar. That may be your redundancy, your backup plan right now. So re redundant setup is simply making a plan for the what if, that's, that's all it is. I would encourage you though, because hope is not a backup plan. Um, hoping that Ableton is gonna work just fine uh, and relying solely on Ableton for all the band on stage. If you remember a couple weeks ago, uh, I'm practicing to, uh, preaching to myself here a couple weeks ago, um, I shared the story of stepping on stage uh, and, and having just a couple members on stage and having a laptop that was way underpowered. This was years and years, probably 12 or so years ago. Um, using just Ableton basically for tracks for the majority of the sounds for that particular show. Pressing play, getting, I think we got 30 seconds into the first song, my computer just completely crashed when it turned back on, basically was dead in the waters at that point. Um, my backup plan was hope. I was hoping that my computer that I knew was too slow to be doing this was going to work. I was pushing it to the limits. I was pushing it too far. Hope is not a backup plan. You've got to make a plan. You absolutely have to make a redundancy plan, um, some sort of backup to, to, to solve for that. Uh, how do you do it? I'm gonna share just in just a moment exactly how to do that, but I, I wanna let you know if you're brand new to this whole using Ableton Live on stage for tracks, uh, or you've been using tracks on stage, but you felt limited, you felt restrictive. Maybe you're a worship leader, you're trying to roll this out to uh, people on your team. Um, and they're just struggling to understand it, to get it. Uh, maybe you're in a cover band and you want to implement and bring tracks to uh, what you're doing, but you just have no idea how to do this because every tutorial you find on Ableton on YouTube is all about music production and EDM. And you're going, I wanna know how to use tracks on stage. Then I wanna encourage you to go to from studio to stage.com slash template. When you go there, you're gonna find my template that I'm giving away completely for free that's gonna get you headed in the right direction, that's gonna allow you to use tracks in a way that's stable, efficient, and flexible. And this comes from years and years and years of testing and trying and developing a method and a process that's used by thousands, thousands upon thousands of musicians and performers all across the globe that have implemented this and had tons and tons of success. While you're there on the page, you'll see some testimonials, some stories from folks that have implemented this, but you're gonna download the free template, but that's not all. You're also gonna get access to a free six day email course where I show you exactly how to set up that template and how to use it with your setup. Uh, so there's no questions asked. You're gonna exactly know how to implement this in your setup, again, completely for free. So head to from studio to stage.com slash template if that's you and uh, you can get a leg up on your competition. And again, if you're a cover band, if you're a band trying to book more gigs, learning this key concept and learning how to understand and uh, use Ableton Live for backing tracks, it's gonna allow you to book more shows and create better shows ultimately. So let's talk about how do we make redundancy happen? I wanna start first with low budget redundancy. What do I mean by that? If your computer goes down, what's your backup plan? A low budget option is to completely render your Ableton Live set uh, from Ableton with as a stereo track. On one side is click. If you're using cues, slate tracks, guide tracks, then add click and guide on one track, on one side. On the other side, it's gonna be all your stems mixed down. Play that from your phone. Load it into Apple Music, load it into whatever your music player is on your phone and have play that from your phone. Yes, there certainly are apps that you can load to use your backing tracks on your phone but I would not invest tons of time into this. I would literally say, this is my worst case scenario. Ableton goes down, here's what we could do. Render your entire set. I know some folks that render each individual song, they could just access it from Apple Music if they need to. Whatever you wanna do, low cost, low budget solution, load your songs, load your set onto your phone. Uh, second option here is uh, buy a Hosa CMP 153, 159. If you've been around the, the site for a while, 
uh, you know what this cable is. It basically takes the headphone out of your computer, splits to two separate individual cables that's gonna allow you again to split and separate your click and guide from your tracks. Now I often talk about this cable and people go, yeah, but that's gonna be mono. Well, yeah, mono tracks is way better than no tracks if you're relying on tracks. And most of the setups and systems that you're using to perform live with are mono anyway. So, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, so get a Hosa CMP 153, 159 headphone cable. Uh, if your interface were to go down, it's gonna take, you know, one to two minutes to plug that cable in. Uh, to then get it connected to two direct boxes to then communicate to the sound engineer. Hey, we're going to switch to that backup plan that we talked about before, but it's better than having no backup plan. Absolutely no backup plan. Third thing I want to share is a low budget redundancy option is have backup cables, have spare cables. Uh, if you buy one USB cable, then you have not bought enough. Anything you go to buy, buy two of. If you're buying a USB cable, buy two of them. If you're buying ethernet cables, buy two of them. Or if you need four, by eight, right? Or maybe go, okay, most likely if two were to go down, we're probably, <clears throat> you know, it, it, we need two backups or whatever. You don't have to completely duplicate everything. Your house is going to be full of lots of crap and lots of cables if you do that, but have a backup plan, have spare cables. Okay. So low budget redundant options, load your set onto your phone. Number two, use a Hosa CMP 153-159 as a backup audio output device. Uh, number three, uh, have spare cables to make that happen. Okay, let's talk though, if you wanna implement a redundant system, I don't care if it's Dante, MADI, analog, if you're doing it for keys, for tracks, for vocal redundancy, vocal processing, whatever it is, there's three S's that have to happen uh, for redundancy to happen. Number one is split. You've gotta take your signal, and you've got to split it. And maybe even before that, I should mention, you've got to have two identical, completely identical setups, two different computers, two different audio interfaces, uh, two different um, uh, audio interfaces to process vocals, whatever it is, two keyboards, you need two systems, right? Two identical systems. And then we implement the three S's of redundancy. Our first one is split. So it's the idea of um, if I'm using a Play Audio 12 and I plug a MIDI controller into the USB host port, of my Play Audio 12, what am I doing? I'm splitting some sort of control signal to both of them so that both are playing at the same time. Second S of redundancy is sync. Now, I said both are playing at the same time. Uh, that's the idea that both of those systems are perfectly in sync. And what I mean by sync is not uh, LTC, not MTC, not in a time code or necessarily playback position type thing. I just mean it's the right preset, same exact preset at the same exact time. Um, when it comes to playback position, I do mean if I'm on the verse here, I need to be on the verse here. A lot of folks, this is kind of inside baseball, but a lot of folks get into redundancy with Ableton Live and they go, how can I send LTC, MTC to both my computers to sync them at the same time? Well, Ableton One doesn't accept LTC as a sync source. It does accept MTC, but it's a, a incomplete solution. So just one MIDI controller, use our first S to split it to both computers uh, to keep both computers number two in sync. And then the third S of redundancy is we have to deal with switching. How do we take outputs from both machines, both keyboards, both uh, interfaces that we're using to process vocals, and how do we make it to where we can only hear one output at a time and how do we switch? There's typically two types of switching, automatic and then manual. Automatic is some sort of test tone that keeps going and when the, the switcher detects that that tone goes down, it switches to the B system. Uh, there's uh, quite a few folks, um, I would say, we tend to be in the more old school camp of playback techs and engineers that do not like manual switching and prefer uh, automatic, or do not like, like automatic switching, but prefer manual switching. Uh, in the case like that, you use some sort of foot switch, uh, maybe the front panel, some sort of button that says, hey, switch from A to B to make the switching happen. So when it comes to redundancy, the three S's are we need to split either our MIDI signal or audio signal, or perhaps both, to two identical systems, Number two, we need to keep those identical systems in sync, meaning the same thing is happening on both machines at the same time. Same presets uh, on both machines at the same time. Same keyboard presets. Uh, same vocal processing happening on computer A as, as is happening on rig B at the same time. And then number three, finally, we have to deal with the switching of outputs. Uh, how do we make sure we only hear A system and then B system? Do we either want automatic or manual switching? Try manual if you can get by with it because I think it's better in the end, but that's just my opinion. So that's a, a look at hopefully 
answering the question for you, is a redundant rig worth it? And again, it all boils down and comes down to, can the show go on without tracks? If so, then uh, you don't have to have it. Ultimately, it's worth having, but you don't have to have it. But if the show is going to completely come to a standstill, if you were not to have tracks or were to not have vocal process processing or were to not have uh, your keys rig, then you need a backup plan. You need redundancy. So thanks so much for listening to today's episode of Behind the Space Bar. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor. If you're all watching on YouTube, then subscribe, enable the bell icon so you see when next week's episode goes live. Leave a comment as well too. Uh, let me know what type of content you want to see. Uh, you know, interact with today's content. Let me know is a redundant rig worth it in your particular case. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please consider subscribing, following the show, leaving a rating and review because it helps the show get discovered. Thanks so much for watching and listening. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.